Good morning, everybody. Orin J here with another War of the Visions video. And today we're going to talk about Addison Ray and War of the Visions. And more specifically, I'm going to try to answer the question, how far can we get with Addison without spending any Vizior on the unit? To give you a little bit of a heads up, because this is a question that I've been asked quite a few times lately. Let me show you where my Addison Ray is right now. Mine's at level 79 at 54 out of 160 for limit break four. Now I have spent zero uh, soul stars. I spent zero Vizior. I have invested zero resources into this unit. On top of that, I earned the last 15 pull tickets for her event. If you don't know what I'm talking about, if you do her newest three quests, you will get 15 summon tickets. They look exactly like this. These have a chance of giving you more of her shards. I haven't summoned on those yet. I will here in a minute, just as part of this video. But I want to explore how far we're going to be able to get for free with Addison Ray and talk about if I think it's enough, how far do I think we should get her for free, just give you my perspective on all of that because these are questions I've been getting a lot. Let's start by doing these summons. Now you can actually do, I, I, Okay, maybe it's not yet. I know in its future update, we're going to be able to do more than just 10 summon tickets at once. Let's go ahead and hit this. I really want to see some Addison Ray shards and not just a bunch of gill snappers. Ooh, that was just a bunch of gill snappers. I might end up being at about the lowest point possible you could be, although I do gold book this one. So that's, ooh, wait a second. Is this multiple? Oh, gosh. Oh, no. Oh, I got baited. It's no Addison Ray shards. It was a lot of gold, but so, okay. Anyway, for the purpose of this video, that puts me towards the bottom end of lucky when it comes to how far we're going to be able to get this girl. And I want to know how far we can get with no investment. Like uh, this is a unit that has been advertised to us all the time. Some people would say it's been shoved down our throat. Some people would, so some people are excited about it. But bottom line, if you just care about the game, this is the best free unit we've ever gotten, in my opinion. She can do a whole lot. She's good good for the light element. And right now I am at limit break three, 54 out of 160, just like I showed you before. Now I want to give you a couple of tips before we go any further. If you do want to spend soul stars on her, you need to keep an eye out for how close you are to max limit breaking her, to getting her to level 99able. Because at that point, once you have enough shards where you can max limit break her, the soul star exchange will no longer be an option for you. This is one of the cheapest ways especially when you're talking about Vizior, to max a unit. So if she's somebody who you want to spend soul stars on, especially if you've been getting lucky on hitting those tickets, if you've been running her in your guild barracks doing Chocobo Expedition, make sure before you get her to 99, that if you're not going to use, if you're going to use soul stars for her, you have done it. Now I have had her to again, give you more of an idea at you saw where mine is. Let me show you what I've been doing. She's been in my barracks since day one. And with all of this stuff in the barracks, I've been cashing in shardless potions every day. These are all units I need shards for. I've been hitting it hard. So I've been getting about four shards from her from the barracks every day since her release. And honestly, do you want to know something that really sucks about her event? The drop rate for her shards in Chocobo Expedition seem really, really bad to me. Today, I already cashed in a 100 and I got zero of her shards. There's another 60 cash in and another zero. So they're not really flowing from this area. So if my plan is to spend zero Vizior, where can I get more of her shards? Well, one of the areas, let's pull it up. One of the areas you could get more of her shards is the social media campaign. Make sure that you've gone to War of the Visions Twitter and like liked this post or retweeted it. You could interact with it in some way because this is additive, like this accumulates. It's 150 more shards. That is basically all of Limit Break 4 that they're giving to us for free. Now, this campaign ends at the end of June. So expect these shards like probably mid July. How does that timing work out with the game? Well, Addison's banners are going to be up until almost the end of July. You can see right here, 33 days left on the banner. And right now we're two weeks in a row where the developers have added more Addison Ray quests to the game with more of those summon tickets. So I think my overall message on how far can we get her 
for free, it feels like she's somebody that, de that the development team is kind of targeting level 99 as the free point. If that's the case, if we can get to level 99, more specifically, if I can get her to level 99 with the terrible luck that I've had on her pull tickets, in my opinion, that will be far enough. A free unit with enough shards to level 99 that is as good as Addison Ray is, a 100 cost unit, I think that is very generous and I am happy with that development. Now, I wanna talk a little bit more about her, um, not her character so much, but about vision cards with her. We just got this quality of life update in the game where job-based vision cards, we can see um, at least who in the group that buff will apply to. And another thing that we got was her VC. What's it called again? A dance that's out of this world. Once again, I have spent no Vizior on this, but I did cash in Mog medals, or not Mog medals, but um stars for these, the uh, Awakening stars. And by doing so, let me, I'll confirm that right now, the Vision Star Exchange Shop. I think I did this by accident on stream yesterday. I did. So I got all the way to 10, right? Which means I did one, two, three, four, five, and then it jumps to 10, and that's where I stopped. By doing that, and having spent no Mog medals, no Vizior, I'm at 85 out of 125. So that's how close you can get this thing to finish without using any um any Vizior at all except for you know, if you count that soul stars cost you a little bit of Vizior all of that now this card is pretty good it's magic up it's magic attack resist up bestowed effect max HP up and then if you're Addison Ray it gives you magic up 12% and this will go up to 15 when you get this thing to level 99 so that's pretty good but who does this card work with well when I was thinking about putting team comps together for Addison Ray I first looked at her vision card and I saw that Starlight Elena, well, let's see here, let's look at this thing. Starlight Elena and Sylvie were two units that could use this card. To me, those are two of the top tier light element units in this game, especially Sylvie is like one of my favorites and Starlight Elena, I think everybody knows how good that character is. So magic attack resist up and 27% magic. You could build a team of those three if you wanted to, and you have Miranda's card that just came out that also hits those three units. It gives accuracy and acquired AP. I don't know that this card is the best card for the group buff, but I did want to point out that secret Secret Party gives a bestowed effect of magic up 21%, which could be good for about anybody. Now, looking at other vision cards that I thought were really good, check this one out. Defenders of the Bonds of Brotherhood. Pierce attack resist, magic attack resist piercing rate up. Addison is really going to like that and critical hit rate up. This card is usable on, guess what, those three again. So I think this is a card, if you cashed in on the Full Metal Alchemist collab, that you could use with Addison. Other than that, I think she would work really, really well in any mono light team, but especially a mono light team, taking advantage of magic up in any kind of way of enhancing her magic types of damage. So these were the units that came to my mind, if you didn't pull Miranda, other light element units I think she'd work well with would be like a Warrior of Light if you wanted to splash a tank in there. Mashery does scale with magic and is 140able, so if you like yourself some Mashery, you could throw her in there. Does Mashery get the buff from this card? She does not. So if you are if you were trying to cash in this uh, Defenders of the Bonds of Brotherhood card, you would not get this magic attack resist piercing rate up on Mashery, which is a little bit unlucky, but this card... Like, I just think this card is so good. It's so good. And so when I see, this was kind of the crux of my team building idea, was when I saw that like Addison, Elena, and Sylvie would get this piercing rate, pierce resist, and critical hit rate up buff from this card. I was like, man, oh man, this is really good. So much about this card is good. Sure, you're not getting the magic attack for Roy, but so much of the rest of it. Also, here's a card that just works for her in the group that I've built, but if you wanted to find a way to make this card work, magic up 60% is insane. Area attack resist up 20 is insane. The big problem with that card is if you're trying to run mono light, here are the three light element units that can use that card. This card is bonkers. When I saw that um, that our new girl Addison Ray was on this card, I was like, oh, here we go. We've got a winner. And then I clicked on the unit list, sorted by light, and was like, never mind. It's not going to be good for a mono light team. 
However, if you could make her work with like Kefka and Roy in some combination right there, that's three really powerful mages. Halloween Lucia for like some cost limited. There are really powerful mages on this card. Velus is a support. Like you see, it's full of mages. Just none of them are light element. So that was kind of another thing that I was spitballing while I was working on some team comps for her. This card, slash attack resist up, magic attack up 28, and agility up 15, could be a really good agility option for her. But once again, here's your light element units that can run this thing, and it's super limited. So if you were trying to run this card on Elena, note again that it does hit some of the same mages that the other like really powerful magic card hit in Kefka and Roy. So you could do an Addison and like Fire Bros comp right here, but the light element units on here just are no good. So I do think there's some fun team comp building ideas you can have with her. If you wanted to stick to mono element, I think Sylvie and Elena, some combination of those two with another unit seems like the most powerful thing to me off the top of my head, but I won't really know more about that until I have a chance to build her up and use her myself. Anyway, I just wanted to talk about where I thought she would end up being free, and I feel like it's going to be about level 99. We can do a lot more team comp building talks with her. I can start trying her out myself once I get her built, but if I'm going to send any message here, I would just like everybody, you know, stay strong. Don't start throwing a bunch of Vizior at this unit that you might not need to throw. It would really suck to end up with like extra Addison Ray Mind Spheres for some reason, especially if they keep throwing us those missions and you get lucky, especially luckier than me, on those ticket pulls. Okay, thank you guys for watching. Have a great weekend. I'm going to be in LA this weekend, so not a lot of content flowing over the weekend, but I will be, uh, I'll post updates from the War of the Visions Fan Fest, and if you can make it out there, come visit us. I don't know exactly what's going on yet, but I'm just looking forward to seeing some of you guys out there that I've known on the internet for years now, but never got to meet in person. That's going to be really fun. Hope to see you there. I'll catch you next time. Peace.